I was inspired by watching a YouTube ad video promising this amazing 10 second health trick that you can add to a glass of water before bed that unblocks your kidneys to allow your body to dump sugar out naturally easily. And then this amazing health tri trick has been used by celebrity trainers and fitness trainers and renowned worldwide health practitioners for thousands of years. But mainstream medicine doesn't want you to know this. You want to know what the special trick is? I'm talking about adding one or two tablespoons or 15 to 30 milliliters of apple cider vinegar to 16 or 32 ounces of water or 500 ml or one liter or a thousand ml of water. And you can do it in the morning or at night, it doesn't matter. What you're doing is you're putting apple cider vinegar in your body. So you can get similar benefits from taking a fresh lemon and cutting it in half and then putting a screen over your glass and squeezing the lemon so it catches the lemon seeds. I don't personally like the smell of vinegar. It reminds me of Film Developer um, or that section of the hardware store where they sell lawn and garden chemicals. Really, this video is a parody to make fun of these YouTube viral marketing ad videos where they offer this 10 second easy amazing health boosting hack and then drone on for five minutes about the benefits of it only to get you to the end where you have to click a link to a product website where they want to sell you some program or some supplement or some supposed nutritional thing that when you take it it revolutionizes your health and wellness but the truth is there's no one thing you can add to your diet or drink or a pill that'll make you healthy Health and wellness is a lifestyle thing that you have to develop for your age and gender, and it changes throughout your life. Nobody knows what's best for you because your DNA and your biome is different. If they did know, they wouldn't be telling you, they would be doing it themselves. The nutritional requirements of a three-year-old toddler are very different than that of an Olympic athlete in their early 20s or the, the nutritional requirements of a sedentary 65-year-old retiree. Ultimately, macros are just how many protein grams, how many carbohydrate grams, and how many fat or lipid grams are in your diet. And that includes minerals and nutrients like vitamins and sodium and potassium and magnesium and calcium, like vitamin A and vitamin B, the B vitamins, vitamin K, D3. I would suggest taking a high quality multivitamin when you eat food. And the best advice I could give you that's generalized and applicable for adults, this is not applicable to children, is to skip breakfast or dinner. And the idea is you're extending the fasting interval. Most people are fasting when they're asleep sleep because they're asleep. They're not eating. And they probably ate dinner several hours before going to bed for the night. And when they wake up in the morning, the body releases orexin A and cortisol and other hormones that I don't know about from medicine and physiology that are involved with the wake cycle in the morning when you wake up for the day. And that naturally pulls uh, blood sugar out of your liver and muscles as glycogen, uh, gluconeogenesis, and causes the blood sugar to rise in the morning even if you don't eat anything. So one of the best things you can do is just drink a tall glass of water and then wait 30 to 45 minutes or an hour before drinking coffee or tea or an energy drink or caffeinated beverage. You wanna allow your body to wake up and that hormonal cascade for waking to subside a little. That way you don't shock your body. There's one meal per day which is a type of intermittent or interval fasting where people typically only eat dinner. Or in Europe, they only eat lunch. And I'm talking about a large nutritious meal because it has to have all your macros for the whole day. So enough protein, enough carbs, and enough fats or lipids to support your body mass, your brain function, and your muscle function. And I didn't touch on this, but sitting too much is just as toxic as overtraining. So rest is very important. If you work out really hard on Monday, you want to take a rest recovery day on Tuesday. And if you're new to working out, you might need two or three rest days to recover. Sedentary for years and years and years, and you're interested in losing weight, and you want to start working out, 
my best advice is to start going for a walk after dinner in the evening and bring a, a jacket or a umbrella if it's raining. You're going to want to do a five minute walk most nights of the week and gradually work up to 10 or 15 minutes. Be proud of yourself for making any lifestyle changes. If you remove processed junk food from your diet or remove sugars from your diet or foods that have added sugars or you reduce your alcohol intake or you stop smoking, if you make healthy lifestyle improvements, a uh, lifestyle, so a habit, if you turn them into a habit, congratulations, you're on pathway to staying younger longer. And for children, because the internet's an endless vortex of time and smartphones are being touched 2,700 times a day and YouTube and TikTok videos like this one are viral in nature and grab people's attention, the 30 minute mark is really where the benefit comes with social media apps like Facebook and Twitter or what is now called X. You can use social media. There's an intelligent, wise way to use it. You can play games on your phone or your tablet or your laptop or your desktop. The idea is to moderate. Even water, you, you don't want to drink five gallons all at once. That would that would blow out all your electrolytes and it can cause fatal water intoxication. So it's not the thing. In medicine, it's the dose that makes the difference. So like 20 micrograms of fentanyl is useful therapeutically in the hospital, but that's like the size of the head of a needle. It's like a, a particle of powdered sugar, like really small, hard to see, where 100 micrograms can be fatal, cause respiratory depression and cause someone to choke to death. It isn't that fentanyl or water or the internet are toxic. It's just they're toxic if they're consumed in excess. And that's true of food too. Someone told me they're allergic to Thai food and when I asked why, she tells me, well, if I eat eight or nine servings, I have indigestion, to which I responded, if I eat eight or nine servings of anything, I have gas and burping and farting and indigestion. It's the serving size. A proper serving size could fit into your hands if your hands are cupped together. If you take your hands like this and form a cup like that, imagine a three-dimensional volume like this maybe like the size of a large apple or an orange, like a, a larger orange, or like a grapefruit, something like a, a softball, you know, not, not a baseball, not a small baseball, the big softball. If you're an adult human, that is a serving size. Hyperactive people and athletes and industrial athletes like UPS drivers, they might need two or three or four of those per day but someone who wakes up and watches TV all day and sits around and doesn't get a lot of activity, maybe one or two of those is sufficient. Excess food consumption causes weight gain, type 2 diabetes, chronically elevated blood sugar from eating a lot of starches and carbs and added sugars is a causal implicator in dementia and Alzheimer's. And excess sugar in children is a known causal basis for ADD and ADHD. And for us in the middle, it can cause brain fog and memory problems. And having a high blood sugar can cause irritability or make you feel angry for no reason. It's really the dose. It's profoundly wise, but with food, less can be more. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, please give it a like, hit that bell, or consider subscribing. That helps my channel. Cheers, I'll see you around.